Hello and good evening everyone, especially people in Clinton County. This video is for you. I was um, given the project by a professor to come up with a healthcare equity proposal. And so I um, decided that I really want to figure out what people in Clinton County know or need or think of in healthcare in our county. So without further ado, I will um, start the content. Okay, so first things first, I want to just um, spend a moment discussing the difference between equality and equity. Um, I have this picture here that's used in a lot of different textbooks, and actually the this newest version has been released, and I've even seen it on my Facebook a few times. Um, so the very left shows everybody getting the same box and so that doesn't work when you treat everyone equal because other people have different needs than other people so then you have the second image which is equity which is giving everybody different things but so that everybody's at the same level so in that middle picture um, all the people watching the baseball game can see over the fence and then in this third picture that came out recently, that really is um, just to depict in different situations, why are these problems arising? So instead of having to give the shortest person two boxes and call out their differences, instead we figure out why are these differences occurring and why do they matter? So then they took down the fence and now everybody can see. So those are different things like infrastructures and mental models and um, the really root causes of an issue. So I really love that um, picture. So just a little bit of an intro to me if you don't know already. Uh, my name's Olivia. I'm from Greece. I go to SLU and um, I'm a senior. I just started and actually I'm kind of a master's student. Um, I just started the master's program through an accelerated program offered at SLU. Um, I started SLU as a biochem major, pre-med track, and I hated going to school. So I decided that I kind of wanted to explore a different option of um, a major, and I did that. And I fell in love with health management. Um, I realized that there were a lot of issues in healthcare, especially in America, that inhibited people from access and from getting the healthcare services that they need in order to be healthy. So I just didn't really feel like being a surgeon was going to be exactly what I needed to do in life um, in order to make that impact that I really wanted to. So I went for this accelerated MHA um, track and here we are and I'm loving it. Um, I also work at St. Elizabeth's. This summer I was a part of this up-and-coming training program um, and as of last week I'm actually going to be a PRN registrar for the time being and I move into an internship role um, eventually so I love it I never wanted to work in a hospital and then I now landed up landed there ended up there and I do love it I love working with our patients you know not everybody is super sweet but it is very satisfying and fulfilling and that I can just like make someone's day even though they're there sick. Um, I get to work at the urgent care, the emergency room, inpatient and outpatient. So I get to see patients in all different um, facets and all different acuities with all different things going on. Um, it's been really awesome to be exposed to that frontline patient care, you know, setting and getting to see the nurses and the clinicians and the docs working together. Um, I'm very fortunate to start my career off right here at the very interaction of the patient being sick or, you know, having some kind of healthcare service and getting those, those services from different clinicians. Um, definitely will be um, an experience that I will take with me through the rest of my time as a healthcare administrator. 
So about the project, um, in my last undergrad class this semester, uh, the professor proposed this project last week. Um, the prompt says students will prepare an individual equity strategy proposal. In the proposal, each student will make a case for an equity strategy as if the student was responsible to develop solutions and to improve an organization's services to the medically underserved. The primary criteria that should be used to develop the proposal are consumer access, provider productivity, organizational profitability, and social determinants of health. The purpose is to help students think through the development of strategic alternatives to achieve organizational goals and meet the needs of the population the organization serves. So I really loved the prompt, and um, it just made me think that there's a lot that I can do right now while I'm still in school to help my community, to help the community that I grew up in. And I don't need to wait till I'm a CEO to make a difference. Um, so I'm going to continue to hopefully do different videos, a little educational video. I'll have you guys interact. Um, I've got questions that I really hope that you guys can comment or direct message me, whatever you want to do, um, that I will definitely include as I continue on through this assignment. Um, but then I also hope to start talking, start the conversation of healthcare and teaching my community a little bit of what I know and thinking about alternative ways to view health. So the quote that I have written down is plan for be with so you can't plan different strategies for a neighborhood unless you're with the neighborhood so the um, community and neighborhood that I've been with for 21 years of my life is Clinton County so um, I'm really excited to see where this can go because I care about you all <laughs> um, so a little bit about America's healthcare system if you don't know, you probably think America's healthcare system is awesome. Although it costs a lot of money, uh, you might think it's great because we're a free market and our government doesn't have to get up all in the business. And um, you may think that that's really great, but really, is it really a free market? Because honestly, the healthcare system in America does not contain the characteristics of a free market, the biggest one being freedom of choices. We do not have a freedom of choice in our healthcare. Um, we go wherever our insurance says we can go, and we hope that we don't get too big of a bill at the end of it. Um, so what is it that we really like about America's healthcare system? What is America's healthcare delivery system? We want to be able to choose our different options and services, yet we have no idea what it really takes to get the health care. All we know is we need to have insurance, so hopefully we have a job. What happens if we can't get a job? So this picture here that I have is the um, healthcare consumption expenditures per capita in U.S. dollars. So this is what America spends per person. Top of the line. Absolute top. Spends the most out of any other country in the world. America is actually one out of the top 25 wealthiest countries to not have a form of universal care coverage. So there's three different universal care coverage models. Um, in Canada, they have what is called national health insurance. And this is where government finances health care through general taxes, and the care is delivered then by private doctors. So Canada has a different health plan for each different province. In the United Kingdom, the government also manages the infrastructure for the delivery of medical care. The government operates most of the country's medical institutions, therefore the pri providers are actually government employees. And this type of healthcare delivery model is called national health system. The third and last type of universal coverage is called socialized healthcare. This exists in Germany. The government mandates contributions from employers and employees to finance healthcare. Companies who collect these taxes are called sickness funds, and then they turn around and pay the physicians in hospitals, and then uh, the providers are still private. So I do have a link in the comments from a video that we watch in a lot of my different healthcare classes and it discusses healthcare coverage all around the world. So, my question to you, what if the healthcare was provided by the government? Or at least we had someone telling us how this all works. Why should we care in Clinton County? Well, that's what I really wanna hear from you. 
So before I uh, dive into the content of the video, I want to give a full disclosure. First, this is a space for discussion, so please do not disrespect the thoughts of others, even if and especially if you do not disagree. I want to know what everybody thinks, and I would love to have a variety of different answers. So please do not be disrespectful, and if you are disrespectful, I will definitely be deleting your comment. Uh, secondly, I cannot promise that the responses will be put into a plan right away. Um, I'm doing what I can, and I don't have a whole lot of power yet, so um, thank you for your responses, but hold your breath because maybe something can happen with them. If anything, this is really just trying to get you guys to think a bit differently. Um, your responses do mean the world to me as I'm about to launch my career in this industry, but this change that the project can make will maybe just impact one person. And if one person can live a better, longer, happier, stronger life, that's really a start. That's where my impact goal is right now, is one person. I'm going to have to be patient for the rest. So number three, if you choose to comment or message me with your response to the questions or about the content from the video, you're giving me full permission to use the response for my project. And in my own Excel sheet for um, how I'm tracking all the data, I actually will put your, um, the town that you live or where you're from, and then I'll also put your age, but it's just so that I know that um, it's just a way for me to keep track of the data and see if there's any kind of correlation between the age groups of people. Um, and lastly, I really hope that at the very least this message makes you consider your own health, your neighbor's health, the babies in SDL and their health, the health of our military members overseas, and the health of the members of the community in which they're fighting. So, simply put, be kind, be passionate, but be patient. That might be a reminder for myself, really. Thank you for your involvement, and find your role in creating a healthier America. So, without further ado, here are the four questions that I want you guys to think about and potentially respond. Like I said, either in the comments or you can direct message me, call me, text me, whatever you uh, want to do to discuss these questions. So the four questions. Number one, what does it mean to be healthy? So in your definition, what does it mean to be healthy? Number two, what do you do in your life to be healthy? This can be everyday things, yearly things, life long things, whatever that is for you. Number three, what is your biggest barrier in being healthy? What prevents you from being as healthy as you would like to be? And number four, what do you want or need in Clayton County to be more healthy? So what, if you could change anything about Clayton County, what would you do to be more healthy and to promote the health of your neighbors? Um, so my answers to this I will share, but I want to make sure that these answers do not influence your answers um, because I think about these questions all the time. So number one, for me, being healthy means to be physically, mentally, socially, spiritually, financially, and emotionally well. And what do I do in my life to be healthy? Well, to be physically healthy, I exercise. I try to eat nutrient-dense food. I drink a lot of water. I wear sunscreen when I go outside in the summer. And I sleep and rest and make sure that that is a priority, which hasn't always been the case, but it definitely allows me to perform better when I'm sleep, when I sleep good. <laughs> uh, for mentally healthy, I like to learn new things and surround myself in a space that my thoughts will be provoked and perspective will widen, allowing me to find more solutions and see different angles to problems. So challenge myself to continue to grow and get the brain going. Um, socially, I know what works for me. And for me, I like to be with others the majority of the time and with myself for short periods of time. So I like to be active and go outside and get in public and not just sit indoors all day. Um, I mean, sometimes I do that, but it definitely makes me happier when I'm with other people. Spiritually, I have found a church and um, found a meaning bigger than myself um, bigger than human life, so shout out to Carlisle Christian Church. Um, I love worshiping there. I love the meaning that that church has given to my life. 
Um, I do little things like every day I read a couple of chapters from the Bible or I listen to some worship music or I can even turn on a sermon because shout out to, you know, technology and Spotify. You can find a good sermon on there every once in a while. Financially, I um, try to budget. I try to um, make sure I have an income and have a job and money's coming in because I have bills to pay. So I try to keep track of my non-essential expenses as well. Emotionally, I go to counseling. Love that. Everyone should go to counseling. And all my friends are probably laughing because I talk about it all the time. Go to counseling, go to counseling, go to counseling. Even if you think you are emotionally well, go to counseling because it's not going to hurt you. It may take a while to find a good counselor that you click with, but 10 out of 10 would recommend going to counseling. Okay, got that point across. Um, I also surround myself with a support system that will look out for my happiness and best interests and help me find that middle ground. So sometimes what makes me happy is probably not in my best interest, and sometimes something that like seems right isn't really going to make me happy. So I make sure that my support system is always um, challenging me but leading me in the right direction. So shout out to you all. Um, number three, the biggest barriers in being healthy. Well, in Clinton County Mental Health Resources, um, we have a lot of counselors, but number one, one that's been there forever is my cousin, so I can't go to her. Shout out to Lucy. Um, and then a couple other ones just popped up, I think, recently. So I just have to Google all of that, and I feel like we, we don't have, like, we don't know it may not be known and marketed as well as it could be and we're definitely a county that struggles with mental health issues so I feel like if we had more counselors that would be great counseling go to counseling in St. Louis again I I don't know where to go um I am not really involved in a lot of community health programs or policies and I go to school in St. Louis for health management so it's a little frustrating. Um, a thing about home, I feel like we don't have, I know we have a lot of gyms, but I don't really know much about them, and I don't really know how I'm supposed to know about them unless I know somebody that has a membership. So what I do for me is I just, like, will text a coach um, from high school and then go up to Central and lift if, if I really want to lift um, or if I'm home and have time to lift. We do have a lot of great parks, which is awesome because that's, you know, where we can be, go to do free physical activity, but um, more like groups would be great, um, accountability groups. I know the Y does a lot of cool things here and there, but things targeted for 21-year-olds, I don't feel like it's, it's an important thing, and it definitely should be. Um, so fourth, what do I want? in Clinton County to be more healthy, well, number one, I would like better mental health resources, more counseling, group counseling. Um, we have one psychiatrist that I know of that comes to Breeze. I think that is absolutely ridiculous in a county that struggles severely with mental health illness, which is like drinking. Alcoholism is a mental health disability. It's a mental illness, however you want to say it. Yet we have one psychiatrist. And I'm not all for just relying on the psychiatrist to be mentally healthy because that's not what's going to work. Um, but that comprehensive, that big integrative care coordination piece for mental health is just missing. And we don't even have the doctors there that can prescribe medicine to help us. Um, community support. I wish we could have more passionate groups that are able to express their thoughts and their action plans. Um, I'll do a short plug now. Um, I'll go into a little bit later more so explaining the details of these two organizations. The Take Action Coalition in Clinton County and the Clinton County Overdose Awareness are two organizations that are definitely community support groups and we need more things like that in terms of just day-to-day -day um, physical activity, eating well. Um, there's definitely people in the community that are a part of a healthy community. We are definitely blessed to have an awesome yoga studio for yoga. Um, I know a lot of people that works for a lot of people, and we also have Breathe and Bend, too. Um, 
that promotes a healthier lifestyle, but making that really affordable for everyone and um, having that support around those things. Because when you see it, someone who's posting about some product that they're in, some group that they're in, and they pay, and then, you know, the whole pyramid scheme thing, but it really works for them, and there's a particular person I have in mind, I'm not going to call out any names, but I feel, feel like not enough people are liking that kind of content, and why, why, why is that? Why aren't people happy for someone who's found happiness and mental happiness and mental well-being by being physically well? So we need to do some kind of support so we can rally around those kind of things. Okay, so another thing that we probably could use more of is grocery options or more farmer's market. I know we have one in Breeze a couple weekends here and there that in the past like year that I've seen, but there wasn't that much marketing around it. Um, obviously, our grocery options are IGA, Heligies, and then Walmart. Um, it really stinks that we don't have that fresh food option. Um, everywhere or affordable per a lot of people's terms so more grocery options would really be um, great Um, I would really love 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 to see a place for a more open approach to women's health concerns Um, we have Soga which is great everybody that I know that goes there loves it Um, but just being able to openly talk about health concerns. Um, Clinton County has a lot of STD rate, high, high, high rates of STDs. And it's because, in my opinion, um, like in eighth grade, we get game plan and they scare us with all these nasty pictures of people and their diseases. And then sophomore year, we have health with Mr. Short. And he's very open and real about it. And, I mean, it could be uncomfortable, especially if he might be your coach. But he does a fantab- fantabulous, yeah, that is a great word, a great job at being open and straightforward with the content and teaching that. And I just wish we could have that kind of discussion continuously for young girls and young men so that they can be open with talking about their sexual health. Because guess what? People aren't just going to stop having sex. So we need to talk about things that we can do to be healthy about that. And having those conversations is actually really, really, really healthy. I mean, it can be uncomfortable if a kid's talking to their parent about it. Maybe that's not how they want to approach it. But having someone that they trust, an adult that they trust, someone to educate them and make them think about the choices that they're making. Um, The next thing I would love to see is a less stigma for non-Catholic religion practices. It was a pretty big and bold move of me to um, go from practicing Catholicism and not so much practicing for the last four years I was Catholic um, and now going to a Christian church people definitely are like oh that sounds cool but it's not pushed as much and I know when I was growing up Catholic I always looked at my friend shout out to Grace and I was like well you don't go to church you're not Catholic so creating a more inclusive environment of different religion practices would be great. We don't have much diversity, but if we did have some people who were uh, like Jewish or Muslim and practiced Islam or Buddhist or Hindi, I think people would probably freak out because it's something different. Um, But newsflash is 2019. Differences exist, especially in the salad bowl of America even though Clinton County is not so much a salable. But you know what? One day we may get there. And at the very least, we need to be um, more supportive of those who are different than us and make them feel welcome in our awesome community. So lastly, I would love to see places that um, people could hang out that don't doesn't revolve around drinking. In high school, this is very difficult. The thing that prevented me from maybe making poorer decisions is... Um, my fear of basketball practice the next day (laughs) Um, or track practice. And so we can't just say, okay, kids, don't drink because it's not going to change. 
and it doesn't matter how much the cops are pushing of underage drinking, cracking down, going to the bars, like it's still going to happen because there's nowhere else for people to go to hang out and be safe. Also, when you're an adult, a lot of things on the weekends revolve around drinking. Different community benefits, different events that you have going on in your personal life, or you just want to go up to the bar with your buddies. Um, Social drinking, I'm not saying that's a terrible thing, but our rates of binge drinking and alcoholism, which are coming up, um, they're alarming because people have nothing else to do. So we need to start finding things for us to do that does not revolve around drinking. So next in the video is the community needs assessment. So I've got these um, four areas from St. Joseph's Breeze implementation plan for their fiscal year of 2018. So since St. Joseph Breeze is a nonprofit hospital per the ACA or Obamacare, um, they are required to do these community health needs assessments and post that information that they find. So the four areas that are um, focused on in Clinton County that people think need the most work is number one, obesity, number two, mental health, number three, alcohol, tobacco, and drug use, and number four, access to care. So I kind of already touched on some of that. Um, so I'm just going to elaborate a little bit on my thoughts on those four things, and I'd love to hear what you think about um, what the four things that you think are the worst. So number one, obesity, America's obese. I have some pretty alarming rates coming up in a couple slides. And our county's obese too. It is. Um, the foods that we eat aren't necessarily as healthy as they could be. We have people who work really long, hard hours. And so at the end of the day, they're not going to spend time to prepare a meal or they'll have leftovers of a crappier meal or they'll just, you know, go through McDonald's and, and get their Big Mac and fries. And being obese leads to a lot of other health issues. For example, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, increased rate of a heart attack, um, less ability to be physically active um, and so that all has to do with physical activity and food consumption so definitely is an issue uh, mental health I've definitely already plugged a lot about the mental health uh, with one psychiatrist in town it's a little bit difficult to you know have a great mentally healthy community <laughs> um, next the alcohol, tobacco, and other drug use. Um, yeah, well, what can you expect when there's a bar on nearly every block and there's not a whole lot of things for high schoolers to do on the weekend after sports or work or doing something with a band or being in the musical? It's just like there's just no awareness. It's just very taboo to talk about and call out, um, but that we've got to do something. We have to do something. We can definitely do something to address that. Um, and access to care, we just have a lack of resources. We have to go west for anything. My little cousin, who was diagnosed with uh, type 1 diabetes a few years ago, had to go to St. Louis all the time to get his A1C checked. Luckily, now that provider comes to St. Elizabeth's in O'Fallon, so they don't have to go as far. But anytime we have a serious traumatic thing, you know, we're always going straight to St. Louis. Well, that is a whole hour of driving that we're not getting care. That our health and well-being is deteriorating. A lot of the specialists that we see, you have to go to Belleville or, you know, St. Louis or even O'Fallon because we're, we're, we're bringing in the specialists. But we have to be able to be healthy enough so that we can make it that hour to go get those resources, unfortunately. So, you know, there's not a whole lot as a community we can do um, to bring access to care to our community but we just need to be a little bit more cognizant of the effects of not having that access to care so moving on from that the next educational piece is called the social determinants of health so the ones I have listed up on this board are environment economics social slash behavioral health care environment and food 
And this is per the World Health Organization, so a lot of different organizations have different definitions and textbooks have different definitions, but I just use the World Health Organization because it's the like most widely accepted. So all these different factors have a role on the health of a person. And if you've never been introduced to this model of health, you probably are thinking, oh my gosh, that makes sense. But how come I only ever focus on healthcare? How come I only ever think about all the things with healthcare and the healthcare services? So I'll just go through each of them and give a couple examples. And I'd love to hear what you think of um, these different factors and how they contribute to health of either our community or even different communities far and wide. So environment is where you live. Um, we luckily have a very pretty clean air um, community, but this also means you're very household. So, you know, the fact that divorce rates are high, that definitely causes stress on children. Children are growing up and it's not, I'm not saying it's good or bad, but it's definitely more difficult to grow up in a house that is divided and sometimes those things absolutely need to happen, definitely. But if we don't think that that has an impact on our health, we're being ignorant. We're actually just ignoring the obvious. Um, in St. Louis, the different cultures, your culture reflects your health. So that would be environment. Moving on to economics, can you afford the care? That's the bottom line. Do you have money to be able to afford the care? Do you have health insurance? Can you afford different medications that you may need? Maybe you have a severe mental health issue, but you cannot afford it because you don't have health care insurance. So luckily, you can look to the other social determinants of health and figure out different solutions to your health problems. The next is social or behavioral, and that falls into like smoking, drinking, exercising, um, different behaviors that you pick up. Etc. Healthcare, healthcare services, education. Hopefully, the more educated you are, the more eligible you are to get a better paying job. Um, sometimes, the more educated you are, you're exposed to different thoughts and different perspectives. So, you're able to be healthier because you just know what to look for. If you're not educated and you don't even know what you don't know, you don't even know what you should search and look up. So the more you read, which I hate reading, but the more you read, the more you figure out, and the more you find out. And I feel so fortunate that I have been able to um, be able to come to SLU and get my education because things I've learned from inside the classroom, I'm able to just use outside the classroom so much more. And that was really important um, for me whenever I was choosing where I was going to receive my education. And I'm very happy that I ended up here. Um, food. Well... If you uh, don't know where the next meal is coming from and you got to scrounge together the pennies and the only thing you can afford is uh, something from McDonald's, you're putting in all those preservatives, all those fats, all those carbohydrates, all those sugars into your body and it's not healthy for you. But unfortunately, the sad reality of America is that's just the way it is. That's our culture. In Europe, people prepare, prepare food so much more. Their proportion sizes are so much smaller. And we wonder why our country is obese. It's a no-brainer. Like, it's right there in front of us. Um, diet, not going on a diet, but what you're eating, if you're not using your food as fuel, you will not be as healthy. I saw a quote the other day on Facebook that you should treat your food as your prescription so then you don't have to uh, eat your prescriptions as meals. And I, that quote definitely hit hard because I don't always make the healthiest decisions either. But while I have my health, while I have a pretty decent health, I need to make sure that I do my part in maintaining it by doing the little things such as eating nutrient-dense meals. So let me know what you think of the social determinants of health. Let me know what you've learned from that. Um, I'm just going to go over some statistics and some things that I want to talk about and then I'll leave it to you guys to start commenting. So this first slide that I have with this, this graph of the blue and the red, this is homelessness in Clinton County. So 
the most, the highest percentage of homeless people are the 25 to 34 year old females. So you don't have a home, your health is not your top priority. Your top priority is just trying to find a roof to go over your head. Next, here is wage by gender and the common jobs in Clinton County. So, um, for anybody who likes to say that the wage gap does not exist, here we go, proof is in the pudding, data right here. And women, if this doesn't fire you up a little bit, I don't know how, because this really pisses me off, to be completely honest. Um, miscellaneous managers, it's just... Why do men get paid a lot more than we, um, than us women do? Um, elementary and middle school teachers, a lot of teachers in our community. And even though it's a little bit of a difference, why is that? Why is that? And if, it's, if your excuse is it's just the way the culture is or because men are better than women, mm, I'm not settling for that. So that pulls into the economics factor of the social determinants of health. The next map I want to uh, show is this makes it pretty evident on the issue of drinking in our county. Heavy drinking. See all this blue and then the yellow, which is more than blue? Right there. Very obvious that's Clinton County. And then the bottom is binge drinking, which I never even knew was a thing until I came to SLU. And it's like over some certain threshold of drinks per hour. So they get this data from when you're and you go to the primary care doctor. My primary care asks me, you know, how many drinks do you have or whatever. And then they probably multiply that by some kind of factor. And then that data gets reported out. So we're orange. And again, the sea of like blue and yellow and some yellow. We're bright orange. So. The next slide that I have is the drug prevalence and behaviors. Um, I'll just let this speak for itself. Eighth grade, 10th grade, and 12th grade. We have to help these high schoolers. We have to set some kind of new tone. We have to be better. We are better than this, people. The next one is the obesity in Clinton County. Um, just looking at the percentage um, from Clinton County compared to Illinois compared to national, we're right up, we're right in line with that. Actually our males in Clinton County are about uh, four and a half, four and a half percentage higher than the national average. Um, male health. Changing that conversation of it not being difficult for males to talk about their health because it's viewed as unmanly or something. I don't know. Um, I think a healthy man is a lot hotter than an unhealthy man. <laughs> I don't know. That's just me. Okay, so the next um, slide, statistics, just definitely underlines, bold, exclamation points, the issue of patient to clinician ratios, which is um, access to care. This is St. Louis compared to Clinton County. Primary care physicians. Um, the trend now in healthcare in America is focusing on that primary care so that we don't have people going to the ED and urgent care, but more so the ED for things that can be um, tackled by primary care. But we have long wait lines and lists because we don't have as many primary cares. Now, I just want to point out that this is everywhere. There's a severe primary care shortage in America because it just doesn't pay as much. But it's definitely needed, and there are things going on in our country that is trying to make that more appealing for um, people in med school. The next slide is healthcare coverage. So talking about insurance, um, if you have a job, great. You probably have healthcare insurance. If you don't, well, you probably don't because you probably have a job of some sort that doesn't have that coverage. Um, 
and it's too expensive to buy private insurance, but you make too much money for Medicare or Medicaid, and that's called the Medicaid gap. And um, Obamacare was the biggest push in our country um, within the past 80 years to try to fix this, and it definitely did. It helped. The um, Obamacare exchanges made those options more affordable. So there, that is it for the statistics for Clinton County. Um, now, before I start talking about Clinton County and introduce you guys to a couple national things, I want to take some time to talk about this Take Action Coalition of Clinton County. So it's a coalition of a bunch of people from a diff bunch of different backgrounds and their focuses are on alcohol and substance abuse, education and prevention, law enforcement, treatment and recovery, and peer support. Um, their vision is to reduce the impact and stigma of substance use among residents of Clinton County. And they have four different areas that they um, look at different perspectives. So thank you, Kara Ladeke, for uh, sharing this information. And if you guys want to join this awesome movement, let me uh, look up what she sent me as the um, when they meet. I think it she said Thursdays, the first Thursday of the month, maybe. Hold on, sorry. Okay, every second Thursday at 3 p.m at Mosaic Church, which is used to be called Ignite Behind Hardy's and Breeze. So if you're interested in that, definitely stop by there. You may see me. Um, okay, so that is a really awesome thing we have in our community, which is a very comprehensive, integrative environment for this care of this population that's uh, struggling with substance abuse. Um, good work, people. Good work. Love to see it. Oh, here we go. I have a whole side meet every second Thursday at 3 p.m. Okay, so the last couple slides here. Um, this first one, I uh, showed this to my cousin, Tyra, and um, I just want to bring this to light to you all. In St. Louis City, three blocks from where I'm from, where I'm living, the infant mortality rate, which is how many babies don't make it to their first birthday, is just as bad, if not worse, than a third world country. Mind you, I'm also two-ish miles from Children's Hospital, and I'm like half a mile from Cardinal Glennon Hospital. So right there, access to care, having the health care services, is not saving these babies' lives. So what is? What is the issue? Genetics? Maybe, but actually it's a lot to do with environment and behaviors and the stigmas around these people that this is happening to. So um, the zip code that I live in is 63108, which is, I think, orange. So the 63106, 63107, those are red, so those are really close to me too. That's North City, St. Louis. What is the city being, doing to address this issue? It really makes me so upset. The red means that 18 plus per 1,000 live births Babies, 18 plus babies, don't make it to the first birthday. That's a huge key indicator on our health. Huge. It's a lot of people that fall through the cracks with Medicaid, don't know how to apply to Medicaid, don't know how to apply to CHIP. This is a crisis. This is a damn crisis. So... I don't know what we can do about that. I know it's being addressed somewhat, but nothing's really going to change until America's healthcare system deviates away from being some kind of di disease prevention, disease treatment plan, not even prevention treatment, 
and we look at these issues of community health. Babies are dying, just like at home. People are dying from mental health, dying, losing their lives, no longer here. Community health is so important. Finding programs, trying to get different things covered. Before Obamacare, people with mental health issues could get denied from insurances because of their mental health. That does not even make sense. So when people like to tell me that Obamacare isn't good, isn't great, has done nothing, do you really know? Well, in a couple slides, I'll show you. <laughs> so here's more about America. Um, Japan is the healthiest country in the world, and America is not the healthiest country in the world. Um, and that's shown by this um, life expectancy. So there's that. The next map that I have is the prevalence of obesity adults in 2015 and 16, and this is in America. These numbers are disgusting. From 30 to almost 50% of certain populations are obese. When is somebody going to stand up and say, maybe our lifestyle and our culture is not good for us? What can we do to help? And these last two slides here are some info infographics on the ACA and what they did. So I'll let you guys read through those, pause on them as I show you. And here's the next one. So with all that, um, thank you for sticking around through this long video, but I'm going to continue to do these and I'm going to continue to push our community to be healthier, to be more aware of different things going on in the nation, um, right across the river, in other countries, what's working, what's not working. Let me know what you think. Let me know the answers to your questions. I'll keep track of that in my Excel sheet. Um, and I look forward to doing more videos, so tell me what you want to hear about healthcare. Thanks. Bye.